Hey everybody and welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 how to video. Today we're going to break down all of the base game cedars that are available in Farm Sim 22. But before that, this video is brought to you by CBW Farms LLC. Thank you for being a farm baron. So recently I did a breakdown video on all of the subsoilers available in game. And we got some very interesting results out of that video. And in that video, I attached one of the planters to the rear of a subsoiler. And I was a little surprised that the planter did not work. I was very much expecting the planter to have planted crop on subsoiled ground. Now, the subsoiler was an agrisim subsoiler, which we have now learned puts a stubble tillage round texture down. And that made me really wonder, is all field work created equal? You know, back in the day when things were a lot simpler in farm sim, you had plowed ground, which we have right here. And you could plant on plowed ground. Maybe not 100% realistic, but you could do it. You had cultivated ground. And you could plant and seed on cultivated ground. Now we have stubble tillage. This is new to Farm Sim 22. I kind of thought that stubble tillage you could plant and seed on because it was, in essence, worked ground. But that one planter did not seem to want to plant on stubble tillage that was created by the AgriSim subsoil. And thus we have this video. I have all of the base game cedars here and I have various types of soil as a result of various types of implements used to work a harvested field. So let's run to the other side of the field and we'll talk about what we used to get each and every one of these scripts on this field. So for our plowed ground, I used the largest base game plow available and made a couple passes. Now ignore this up here. I've rolled all of this ground with a roller because I want to have this prepped in the event that we need to test some things out. So plowed ground, I obviously used the base game plow. Here I have cultivated ground and I used one of the spaders to create this. So this is spaded soil. And I did test all three spaders produce the same soil. Spaded produces a cultivated ground texture. Here we have stubble tillage as a result of the large 8 meter agrisim subsoil. Here we have cultivated soil that is produced by the 4 meter coon subsoil. We've seen that in a different video. Here I have stubble tillage produced by a power harrow. Over here we have cultivated ground produced by a standard cultivator. Then over here we have stubble tillage produced by a shallow cultivator and stubble tillage produced by a disc harrow, and then we have a strip of completely unharvested ground. Okay, and that runs all the way down the field. And then up here we have a section where I used a roller to roll all of the various types of soil, and it produced a rolled seed bed. Let's go and take a look at our ground state. So you see we have a big section of seed bed up here. Then we have plowed ground. We have strips of cultivated ground where we had, again, the spader, the coon subsoiler, and the traditional cultivator. 
And then we have stubble tillage, where we use the Agrosim Culti Plow 8 meter, the Power Harrow, the Shallow Cultivator, and the Disc Harrow. And as I said in the Rolling Revisit video, we have a few sections where you'll see we have little strips of seed bed between stubble tillage and cultivated. And that is a result of overlap, where I overlapped the implement a little bit. So here we have a little strip of seed bed where I overlapped the shallow cultivator on cultivated ground. So if you work the ground with a cultivator and then come through later with a shallow cultivator, for whatever reason, you're going to get a little strip of seed bed. Same happened over here, where I worked and had a little bit of an overlap between my cultivated ground with the subsoiler and my disc harrowed ground. We have a little strip of seed bed. And the same thing happened over here again, where we overlapped a bit of the spaded ground with the subsoiler of the agrosim we get a little strip of seed bed. It's kind of interesting that we get that. And I think when we get to the weed section, it's going to be kind of interesting the results we see as a result of that overlap. There may be benefits in making multiple passes with different types of field work implements. Now let's take a look at all of these cedars in the shop. Because these are not all created equal. That is for sure. So we have the first set of cedars are also technically power harrows also. So the Nordstein has a power harrow in front, cedar in the back. Okay. So this cedar and all of the cedars, including the Amazon, is this power harrow in front, cedar in the back. The Kuhn HR4040 Venta 4030, power harrow in front, cedar in the back. And the Kuhn 6040RCS BTFR6030, once again, power harrow in front, cedar in back. All of these have the ability to seed on harvested, unworked soil. The reason is because of the power harrow in front. In essence, in one pass, you are power harrowing and seeding. So it'd be the exact same as running a power harrow through plowed ground or cultivated ground, stubble tillage, or seed bed or running a, a power harrow through just harvested, unworked ground. The next set of cedars we have start here with the pottinger. So let's go to the shop and look at those. Now the pottinger also says this machine offers the ability to directly seed. No previous cultivating or plowing is necessary. Okay. We have a little bit different help text for our power harrow enabled seeders in a cultivator prepares fields for the next sowing. This machine is used for seeding crops like wheat, barley, and canola. Okay. So the Pottinger, the ES Pro 6000 RC, and the Rapid A 800 S all technically cultivate and seed at the same time. So they have discs or kind of a disc harrow, if you will, up front. And then they have the seeding parts towards the back. Same goes with ES Pro, like we said. Discs up front to work the soil and then the seeding action in back. And same with the Vander stand, discs in front to work the soil, seating action in the back. 
Now, the final two base game cedars are completely different. That is the Lemkin Solitar 12, which only has seeding function. No other field work capability is, is happening here. It's just putting seed in the ground. The same with the big Amazon here. No other discs, no power harrow, nothing up front. It's just what you need to do to put seed in the ground. So those, when you look here at the cedars, they are not going to have anything other than these machines are used to seed your crop. These two machines are going to require more field prep than any of the previous seeders that we have here available in the shop. So the reason I'm doing this video is some comments that were made related to the field work video I did initially, where we worked the ground with a plow, a cultivator, a subsoiler, disc harrow, and a shallow cultivator, and we saw the different textures. And then we fast forwarded time, and we saw that various ground states produced weeds, and various other ground states didn't produce weeds, and it was a little contradictory to the tutorial information. And folks commented back, well, I disc harrowed, and then I seeded, and now I have weeds. And that's why this video is partially existing, because it 100% depends, I think, on which seeder did you actually use. Because if you used one of these seeders that technically is a power harrow in front, then you actually power harrowed your stubble tillage and seeded at the same time. So the end result is you stubble tillaged, power harrowed, and then seeded. If you used one of these later seeders, you technically stubble tillaged. Okay, so you shallow cultivated, you agro sim, power harrowed, you power harrowed, or agro sim, subsoiler, power harrowed, or dist the ground, and that's why you got stubble tillage. And then these are technically cultivating in front, seeding in back. Okay? So let's get to action and see how each one of these acts across all of these various soil types. Because I think the results are going to be interesting. Now the first test I want to do with the Nordstein is... I want to run it on rolled ground. So we can see here, if we lift this up, our power hero is running. I want to run this across the seated ground. And then I'm going to turn around and run it across all of these various soil types. I also am going to turn this off because the ones that have subsoilers, they appear to also let you turn off the cedar, at least the Nordstein it does, Nordstein. Now take a look, once we get into here, we are very interesting. That is not the result I was personally expecting. I was personally expecting to be able to directly seed on harvested ground. Very, I, I was not expecting this result. Let's see what we get. We get a completely different seeded texture. Completely different seeded texture across the soil. Wow. That is very interesting. 
Quite frankly, I was not expecting that whatsoever. So here we have seeded, but this is like seeded tillage. Seeded stubble tillage. And here we have regular seeded ground. You know, really interesting to not only see that on stubble tillage, but to see it also come across on cultivated and plowed ground. Really was not expecting that at all. Now, let's move on to this particular pool. And I want to note that we have a few things going on here. Note that I am not, at the moment, using the front power hero. I turned it on, and I have it turned off. Okay. So we're going to leave that front turned off for a moment. So I'm seating. I'm seating. I'm seating. Okay, so we have seeded ground here. This says growing. We have seeded ground here. Seeded ground here. Now let's turn on the power harrow and see how our textures might look different. Let me zoom in. You see the power arrows spinning now. We are getting kind of what I was expecting from the first cedar quite frankly we got exactly what I was expecting from the first cedar with the power hero running I got the seeded kind of no-till texture the seeded cultivated texture cycling back and forth so I got a very different result. But still, over here on the harvested soil, I get nothing. We can't seed directly on harvested soil, even though we have a power harrow in the front. Very interesting. We can power harrow harvested ground, and that's what, that's what gives us this. That's exactly how I did that. Move on to the next. We're going to conduct the same test as we did earlier. Where we're going to only turn on the seed portion. So the power arrow is doing... Oops. Power arrow is doing nothing at the moment. It is not spinning whatsoever. Getting the exact same results we got with the first cedar there. Now let me turn on the power harrow. And you see the power harrow is spinning. We get results very similar to the first Nordstein pass. Just with respect to how the ground textures are looking. Once again, we are not allowed to seed harvested ground. Still is interesting. 
And we are able to seed across all of the other fields. Soil types. Now we go to our final seeder that also has, in essence, a power harrow in front. Now this one, I can only turn on the entire kit and caboodle. I can't turn on the seeder only of this particular tool. Now this video is done by version 1.1.1.0 of the game. So after the patching that is inevitably going to occur very soon, our results may differ on this. We'll just have to wait and see how it comes through. So there we go. And once again we are getting no change in our harvested portion of the field we have growing wheat across all the states but we have this no-till seeded type texture oddly i think it's a little bit of a bug i think it's not i think it's not detecting that i'm going into cultivated stubble tillage cultivated stubble tillage because here I don't get that cultivated or, or um, direct till type texture now we move on to the pottinger the pottinger acts as a cultivator in the front cedar in the back turn it on And let me stop. Let's zoom on in here. What I was looking for is I wanted to see if at the very front of the cedar, if we were getting cultivated state, but we're not. See what happens when we get to here and you can see we are allowed now to directly seed with these over harvested ground so we have growing wheat across all of these states again i kind of now thinking it's a little bit of a bug here when we start going between our stubble tillage and our cultivated ground that it's not properly picking it up and it's just laying down this kind of no-tilled stubble tillage seeded state now on to the next cultivator slash seeder Getting the same in general behavior. And I thoroughly expect to have the same amount of weeds across all of those strips where we've used these last two cedars. Because it's in essence cultivating in front. Move up here to the Vander Stand Cedar. That again allows direct seeding on unworked soil. So once again, it's acting kind of like a cultivator. See if I if I if I stopped right here. And I moved to here. And I turned it on and dropped it. 
And then if I stopped here, move to here. Then I want to do one more. Just wanted to see what I would get. And I was I was right with how I'm thinking here. So once again, because this will cultivate in seed, we can direct plant on harvested ground, on stubble tillage ground, on just cultivated ground. So when we're cycling between stubble tillage and cultivated, it's not it's not detecting that change and changing the texture it's putting down. Now this will be an interesting result for the final two. I expect it to be able to seed across plowed and cultivated soil. But now I'm a little curious what it might do on stubble tillage. Okay, so it is seeding across stubble tillage, which is different than what the planter was doing in the other video, which we're gonna be doing a planter video. But what we're gonna see is it's gonna do nothing here on the harvested soil. Zilch. And we should have now the same result with our big Amazon. Oh my gosh, when your fingers are just not quite on the right keyboard. So we can direct seed on plowed, cultivated, stubble tillage ground. Just like that. I wanted to separate those up just a little bit, just to see if we get different weeds as a result. So just like the Limpkin, we're able to seed on stubble pillage, cultivated ground, and plowed ground. Just like that. So now let's advance time and see what happens with respect to weeds across all of these various seeded areas. One month have, has passed, and we've got wheat across all of our various strips. We are right now in the plowed, where we had plowed ground. And you can see across all of our cedars, we are sitting at 0% weed, as we would have expected, because we learned that weed or plowed ground does not produce wheat. Plain and simple, right? Now we move over here to our cultivated ground. And we have weeds here on our non-planted cultivated ground. We have no weeds where we've overlapped what would produce stubble tillage and cultivated and we make seed bed. We have still no weeds on our raw, untouched stubble tillage. Okay? No weeds. Now, this is very interesting result. We have a buku weeds in our seeded stubble tillage ground compared to cultivated ground stubble tillage 
cultivated stubble tillage. I mean, you can, undoubtedly, you can see that. I'm going to fast forward another month. These things will flower up. We'll definitely see that there. Over here, where we have direct seeded onto harvested soil, we have what looks like the same density of weeds as we have on stubble tillage ground. Now, I said in the roll revisit video that looking at the weed percentage wasn't really the best thing to do. So you get 100% accuracy on how dense weeds were other than the fact that the area immediately around you. But if we walk here, just walk across, we're at 20%. 75 percent 35 percent 50 to 60 percent 75 pretty 70 75 percent 40 percent and zero percent we look at our field layer we can see where we have our weeds are exactly where we have our cultivated ground. We have no weeds on our stubble tillage until we plant. And then we have weeds where we planted. Here we have the harvested soil, untouched. Two cedars that couldn't plant anything and harvested. Three cedars here that could. We have weed growth. So, for the folks that did their shallow cultivation, which is right here, this is this is a pass of shallow cultivated ground. This is a pass of a shallow, sorry, this is a pass of disc harrow. We disc harrowed this pass right here. We shallow cultivated this pass right here. We standard cultivated this pass right here. We power harrowed this pass. This is a coon subsoiler right there. This is the agrosim subsoiler. This is the spader. Which according to the document sounded like we shouldn't get weeds. But we are right now. And then this is the plow. So let me go another month. And I'll be right back. So we've gone another month. It's October. Weeds non-existent in our plowed ground. Cultivated ground. We don't have any flowering weeds. We have weeds of probably a couple of different growth states. The percentages are kind of jumping around between 60 and 70 some percent. But you can see that across all of this, right? stubble tillage ground we now have big flowering weeds our weed percentage is closer to 100 percent other than where we have done nothing to the ground which is very similar to what we have seen in the past in our cultivated ground stubble tillage all the way over here then to our harvested ground where we have the three seeders that we're able to work that, and that is basically the same general weed pattern as we see with the stubble tillage. Now, I'm going to go and grab a sprayer. And I'm going to spray herbicide on this because I want to see if I can one pass herbicide and eliminate the weeds off of all of this. Okay? That's what we're going to do now. We got a herbicide. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Across all of these. Let's get above our cedar. <laughs> and I'm just going to go ahead and spray this too while we're at it. Remember, we had our rolled 
seed bed up here. We are only seeing weed growth. On the cultivated section. And our herbicide is not killing those weeds on rolled seed bed. Look at this. It's very interesting. We still see those wheel areas where we had um, crop destruction, apparently, on our weeds. That is real interesting that we couldn't kill the weeds. Because so all these weeds are the same age. Go. One more pass. I mean, what we're seeing here where we're not <coughs> able to kill weeds on the ground that is rolled is very interesting, very odd. I got to think that's going to be fixed in an update. But it also tells me that don't mess, don't be bothered with those weeds. Don't be bothered with trying to get rid of those weeds. The active seeding will get rid of those weeds. So let's see where we are on our percentage. So we still have weed of 50%, even though we have killed those. Very interesting. We might be revisiting this revisit. Here we have under seeded ground. We just went from here again. Remember I said that the percent should not really be held to that high regard, 50%. We just walked down here to where we seeded, and now we're down to 27%. The same ground. <laughs> Just worked with a cedar. 75%, even though we herbicided. 0%. So, kind of interesting with the weeds. Again, the weed results may or may not change with an update. But it does seem that overall things are working as expected. Stubble tillage does appear to produce more weeds than cultivated ground. Doesn't look like here right this moment because of the fact that these weeds were taller and these weeds weren't. But at any rate, uh, there's one more thing I want to look at. I want to seed the rolled ground here. And it should get rid of the weeds. It is. It's just wiping the weeds away. Like I said, I would not bother with weeds on rolled ground because as soon as you come through with a cedar, you're in essence wiping those weeds away. Yes, they will grow back. They will surely grow back, but you can deal with them then. You don't need to deal with them before you seed. And here we are. Weed. Zero percent. It's if they were never there. So guys, I hope this has answered more questions than it has caused. Maybe it hasn't. Maybe now it's opened up 75 other questions. But I did want to run through this video because one, I wanted to see the results for myself. Two, I wanted to share those results with you all on all of the various types of cedars we see in game we got very different results than what i personally was expecting on the smaller cedars that have what looks like a power harrow in front but it's not really acting like a power harrow in front because of the fact that we could not seed 
harvested soil. I, I would have expected that this cedar, this cedar, this cedar, and the Nordstein cedar over there would have also allowed me to seed harvested soil. But it didn't. Even though it has power harrow, or what looks like a power harrow up front. The Pottinger, the Coon, the Vanderstand, all behaved as I would expected. Allowed me to seed across all the soil types, including straight into a harvested field. The Limkin and the Amazon, the two largest seeders in the game, base game, did not allow direct seeding into harvested soil. And I did not expect it to do so because one, the health test said it wouldn't. And two, because it just has the small discs and rollers associated with putting seed in the ground. It doesn't have all of the other field work type discs here in the front. So let me know in the comments, what do you think of this video? I'm going to be putting out another video that is basically the exact same. Just we're going to take a look at all of the base game planters and see if we have a different result. Specifically a different result on this stubble tillage. Because we saw that one planter on the Power Harrow Revisit video did not put any crop in the ground on stubble tillage directly behind the cultivator or directly behind the subsoil. Very, very interesting. So until next time, happy farming.